So, you've been following my guide on how to unlock Zepho, and then you go, gee whiz, I wish somebody told me how to actually beat the missions, because some of them are a little bit of a doozy. Let's break this down. Here we are on wonderful Zepho, ladies and gentle beans of the tribe, and welcome back. I'm your boy Scribble, and today we're going over combat missions and special missions. Isn't it marvellous? Firstly, why would we want to do this? Well, let's take a look at the rewards. If you hit the first tier, you get some Chirotech, which is nice, and some Get3 currency. Lovely. If you hit the second tier, you've got some more Chirotech and even more Get3 currency. It's actually quite significant, I'd say. And then if you hit the final tier, you max out this sector, you do earn yourself an extra star for the entirety of TB, which is lovely. I do think it's worthwhile. And what you can do, obviously, is once you've unlocked Zepho, you will... You can always just preload up to the point before and then look to max it out afterwards. Now, you are going to want to maximize the operations or platoons, however you want to call it. So if you need to spread that over multiple phases, do so. It is very important because it gives you the access to the event special ability over here. Super, super important. OK, so the level one over here, when you use it, you will essentially grant a buff called the Boon of Aileram, which gives you a stacking 10% mastery every time you use a special ability. If you then use that special event ability on the same character who has the level one, it will upgrade to level two. When the level two buff is on there, it's called Boon of Mictral. Mictral is an interesting word. At the start of this character's turn, grant each ally every non-unique buff they had, excluding stealth and taunt for two turns. This is hugely beneficial, and it works really well with certain teams in particular that we'll get to in the online force user mission. At level three, it's even better. You put it on to a level two character, that's how they get the level three. Now, if you've already got the level three, when you use the event special ability on that character, it will pass all level threes to all your allies. So I will say it's better to focus on one person. So say you've got JMK, for example, just use the boon ability on him three times to get him up to the three tier, then use it one more time and he'll pass it to all of his allies. Very, very useful. OK, so what does the level three boon do? This one is super useful if you don't have a whole lot of stunner characters available. At the start of this person's turn, you stun all enemies that have got less than 10% health. OK, now that can be resisted. It's not a guaranteed to stun. It does go through a tenacity check. So potency comes into play a little bit there. And when you use a basic ability, if the target is stunned, you inflict massive damage, which really helps you clear through the waves very, very quickly. All right, so now that we've got that nuance out of the way, I want to start off with the harder missions and then work through the CMs. We're going to start off with the special mission. The special mission, you need to be using clones to do this. Now, it can be any of the clones in the game, including Omega. Yes, she is apparently a clone trooper. I know, it's news to me too. Now, you can do it with the 501st, but if you have Bad Batch available, highly Highly recommend you do Bad Batch. I could obviously only do this mission once, so I only have Bad Batch footage for you. But don't worry, we don't need to take an Omega. This is the setup that I went with. I'm going in with Hunter, obviously all of the Bad Batch, Hunter lead, and have Rex, and try to put him in the fifth slot. It's always best to have Rex, uh, Captain Rex over here in the last slot. I find this to be the best setup to use. Captain Rex gives you so much more survivability and has an AoE tenacity down, which is so useful when you're trying to stun people. The first wave is the tricky one when it comes to this special mission. You've got these three droids that you do see within the Fill and Order game. You can only defeat these when they are stunned. This is why Bad Batch are so good, because there's so many uses of stuns. They do ridiculous amounts of damage, all right? Ignore the event special ability to begin with when we're working on this, because all we want to do is try and get those stuns rolling, all right? So... Uh, at this point, you can probably put the event special ability once. I'm using it on Captain Rex because he's going to be taking the most turns for me. And you just want to look to try and control the enemy team. Keep them stunned because the amount of damage that they can deal, and this is no joke, is enormous. So, stun them and focus down on one character at a time. Don't worry too much about passing that buff. Your main priority is killing each individual unit at least once. I like to start with the, se the secondary units because it feels like they have less health overall. So it's easier to chew through them, leaving you with just one guy. Because if they start getting their AoE off, it does so much damage that it's not worth even thinking about. 
passing back and forth here. Obviously, you've got a stun with attacks AoE bomb here. You've got a stun with Wrecker's AoE if he has got all of his stacks of Fury or whatever it's called. And uh, I believe Captain Rex has also got a stun on his first special. So I'll go ahead and just pop. Come on, get that Tomb Guardian down. Yeah, I'm on that AoE there can really hurt. That was uh, low damage for them, but uh, it can really, really hurt. So I think we decide to try and just finish off this Tomb Guardian. That's what we want to do, get rid of him. And then I'm healing up here, but we could have used the event special ability if we wanted to try and get it up there. So we've got two uses right now on Captain Rex. At three, he'll have all of the maximum benefits, but I don't think it's necessary for this one. I think you can safely ignore it if you're going in with Bad Batch and Captain Rex calling into the assist now obviously we can't kill this guy until he's stunned he is now successfully stunned i forgot actually that uh, a bad batch echo also has a stun on his call to assist now the second wave we face off against a jedi master and her padawan you actually hear about this in a force echo in the fallen order game i thought that was a really nice touch that you actually had these characters introduced now these ones don't have nearly as much damage output as we saw in the first wave so it's a lot easier to manage what they do have however is a boatload of health they are really tanky so we can control them quite a bit if you've got some decent potency out there you'll be able to land quite a lot of the exposes which will chip through the enemy team a lot quicker than normal but other than that you just have to keep working away at it and eventually you will cut them through there's no real special tactic to this if you've gone through the first wave the second wave should be absolutely no problem for you and there we are we're just finishing off padawan marsef now and that will about do it for the special mission really not too much of a bother like i said if you can deal with wave one wave two is not really going to give you too many troubles fantastic moving on next then we're going to look at the combat mission that requires jedi knight cal kestis he is locked into the leadership, and that means if you do not have Omicrons on him or don't have his leadership Omicron, you are going to have to take in significantly stronger Jedi than normal. Now, I like to use JML with this one, but I'm he I hear that JMK can also work. If you have the Omicron, you can go in with much lower teams, okay? But I am not going to mess around here. I'm going to take in a super strong team, and I'll show you exactly how to get this done. This is the team that I like to use. We're going in with a Gen Knight Cal Kestis lead. Obviously, he's locked in that leadership, and I have no Omicrons on him. I'm going in with Jedi Master Luke, his younger self, Grandmaster Yoda, and Shaq T. I find those two to have really, really good synergy for this special mission in particular all right the first wave consists of a purge trooper two of those commando droids and two stormtroopers as well they will spawn in an extra imperial probe droid just like some of the i think it's bracca mission actually does that so what we want we've got shakti over here who can force a taunt on jml with her first special after that we're looking to pass turns back and forth get up to the event special ability which i'm using on jml because he's going to be taking the most turns and uh, cycle turns then. Cycle turns with Gen Knight Cal, cycle turns with GMY. Really, really good team comp for this mission in particular. I know it's quite a heavy investment, but it's in your interest to beat the combat mission rather than not. All right. Fortunately for this, we, can, we do actually have two sources of dispelling as well. Basics from Shakti and Jedi Knight Luke will be able to get rid of the buffs on the enemy team, stop that probe droid from taunting, etc, etc. The main thing that I want to do right now is I'm going to focus damage on one of those security droids, and then when we built up enough stacks, we're going to get the insta-kill on the Purge Trooper, who I feel is the biggest threat. So I'm keeping him stunned, keeping him controlled with Jedi Knight Cal, and trying to build up, swapping between the dual blade, blade stance and the double saber, alright? So working through it here. GMY is also really good at cycling turns. Every single turn we use and every single turn the enemy gets, it decreases the cooldown on the event special ability by 3%. And once we get up to that triple stack, as we saw, we get all of those boons on JML and then we get to pass it to the entire team. So again, focus the damage on one unit at a time. I'm starting here with the security droid. Once we get a turn back over to Jedi Knight Cal now, we'll actually be able to swap over to the cross guard stance. And the first time you use that ability, it works like an insta-kill. It's very similar to Commander Ahsoka Tano's Force Leap, except he has to go through a few more hoops in order to get his insta-kill off. All right, so here we go. Jedi Knight Cal is going to swap over cross guard stance, target the Purge Trooper. Purge Trooper is Dunzos. We hop with Grandmaster Yoda, then spread those buffs. I believe we've had two boons already on JML, so one more boon is going to put him at that triple stack. 
which is great because then once we put it on him once more after that triple stack, he's going to pass all of those benefits to the entire team. Super, super valuable. Alrighty, we're at 59% right now. The second security droid has gone and we're just left with some incredibly tanky stormtroopers. These guys take a short while, short while to take down. I'm just going to increase the play speed right now to stop you from dying of boredom. So here we go. We're just going around. We're doing our special abilities. Nothing too fancy here. We're just trying to put some damage in and use the event special ability over to JML when we get the opportunity. Get all of those boons maxed out. This will help us because it does carry over between waves. So we go into the next wave in as powerful a position as possible. You also want to try and end this wave with Cal in the double saber stance or the twin saber stance because that means you can swap out of it doesn't have the repost doesn't then threaten the ipd with an instant kill it's less of an issue in this particular special mission compared to the special mission to unlock zepho but it's still worth doing and it's good best practice guys so focusing down one stormtrooper at a time don't worry, if you have some of the Omicrons on Jedi Knight Cal, this mission becomes a lot easier because you'll be able to carry over those stacks that he needs um, for using his crossguard stance. and You'll be able to instantly defeat one of the units in the next wave. I'm just looking to defeat the enemies and keep my cooldowns nice and low so I've got every ability available right out the rip. There we go, getting the armor shred on that Stormtrooper. I think that is now triple stacks on, uh, on Jedi Master Luke. You can see all of those non-unique buffs are now spreading constantly, giving us loads of different buffs. GMY is obviously able to spread them, so we've always, always, always got them. It's really rather nice, I feel. There we go with the attacks. We can go into cross guard stance. That's not much of a problem. It's not really going to impact what happens at the start of next wave. If we can get over to the other stance, even better. Saving our cooldowns once again before we go into the next wave. So next wave, we're facing off against Second Sister or Triller from Fallen Order and two Purge Troopers. Once again, when they take a turn, they will summon an Imperial Probe Droid, which we have to deal with. So we want to try and get Jedi Knight Cal back up to those stacks of, I can't remember what it is, prepared, something like that, um, so that he can insta-kill her. I'm accidentally targeting Second Sister. I should really be targeting the Purge Droids, the Purge Troopers, because they're the ones that matter. We can use Shakti Special again to bring the taunts over to JML so we don't have to worry about them killing other people because they do have a significant amount of damage on this team. So GMY passing that foresight, absolutely phenomenal. We've got the triple stacks of the boons on everybody now. So everybody is going to be trying to stun the enemy team. They're going to um, be ramping mastery, all that sort of good business and shearing all of the buffs that they get at the start of their turns really really useful we're always going to have foresight we're always going to have retribution we're always going to have offense up tenacity up all that good business it makes it so much easier to get that uh, double or triple stacks out as soon as possible and they're going in after jml thankfully like i said we've got that crit hit immunity on him and we've got the taunt on him they can't dispel it and even so and my jml has got about 160,000 protection even so they're chewing through his protection pretty quick so we're nearly there. I think we need two more turns with Gen Knight Cal to get the instant kill on Triller. We just need to swap back and forth. I like to send it over to JML um, just because he's got a lot of useful abilities for us. He can increase cooldowns and he can pass us TM, all that sort of good business. So just hop in with GMY, cycling through the abilities. Once you've got the triple stacks, the event ability on everybody, you don't need to use it anymore. You will notice that I did keep using it a couple of times in a few of the battles because I'm not too familiar with these missions. But I have since learned I am more informed, but none the wise. No, I'm much wiser. Much wiser. But yeah, overall, not too bad because now Jedi Knight uh, Cal is going to use his cross guard stance on Second Sister, get rid of her, and it's just a lone purge trooper that we have to deal with. Not a problem in the slightest. See, I use the event special ability here. Doesn't do anything. We've already got triple stacks of those boons on everybody. So we can just... Uh, I'm just double checking. I'm like, do I have all of those? Yes, I do have all of those. My short-term memory loss coming into play there. But yeah, a lone purge trooper isn't really going to bother you. We even have heals available from our good girl Shakti. And that's going to about do it for this one. That combat mission done and dusted. Not too many issues. Now, I consider the Unaligned Force user mission to be relatively difficult just because it's got a smaller collection of characters that we can pick from. But I did come up with a team that I feel is probably the most ideal. 
Uh, so let's take a look at that. We're going in with GL Ray. I'm taking in Calcastis, Ahsoka Tano Fulcrum, who is so good for this mission, JTR and Ben Solo. Now you don't need Ben Solo, but it does improve your odds. If you don't have Ben Solo, you could throw in Commander Ahsoka Tano. You could throw in Stick Ray. I don't recommend it. Or you could throw in CLS. Seer doesn't really bring a whole lot to this team, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend going in with a Seer lead. I just don't think it adds a lot of value here. J Ray is going to be your best bet, especially if you've got Ben to help out. So wave one starts us off with two purge troopers and two of those commando droid thingy my bubba jiggers. Now, I like to try and get that light, uh, that lifeblood over there on JTR at the rip, and you'll notice how quickly they get our Ray into damage immunity. Stupid quickly. But it's not too much of a big deal because as long as we've got Ben over there, we can't lose our Ray for one. And secondly, it does give us the opportunity to immediately use a Whirlwind, and that can help us get rid of these Purge Troopers. Now, Ben's second special does dispel all buffs on the team, so we can use that to get rid of Taunts. Unfortunately, we could have killed that Purge Trooper there, but I used a basic with, uh, with uh, sorry, the second special with OG Cal. So I put the healing immunity out there. We've got another Whirlwind. I'm sending it over to the other Purge Trooper. I was hoping to get the kill on the first one with the collateral damage, but we didn't quite make it. And there we've got rid of him. So we can go into ultimate here, which is going to protect us from damage. We've used one stack of the event special ability on Ray already. We want to try and get through to two and then three as quickly as possible. I probably should have used that um, dispel over there on the commando droid, uh, the security droid, sorry, not commando droid, um, to get rid of him. But hey, Fulcrum just does so much good damage here. Highly recommend you guys get Fulcrum up. She's really useful in a Seer team in TW and uh, and in GAC, actually, with Malakos in particular. Unfortunately, we can't use Malakos in this planet. Alrighty, so taking down the units one at a time. If you kill enemies with Ben Solo's second special, he actually ramps 10% offense for each kill, so that's good to know. Unfortunately, that benefit doesn't carry over between waves. Now, what you can do, which is what I did at the end here, is if you target everybody apart from the leader in the enemy team, you can actually time out the battle so you can get those triple booms on your character before going into the final wave, which will help, but it's not necessary. I decided to play the cautious road here and try to make sure that I had those triple stacks going into the next wave to maximize the chances. Fulcrum just destroying fools left and right. Absolutely love Fulcrum. All right, so I'm just using basics here. We've got the ultimate coming out of Ray. Look how much health these guys got. They are so tanky, so tanky. So yeah, like I said, when you get to this point, if you want to, you can choose to just try and whittle away very, very slowly and time out the battle, essentially, so that you can keep on using that event special ability, get all three boons on Ray, throw one more on her so she'll pass all three boons to the entire enemy team. Not necessary, but if you really, really want to guarantee the victory, then that's what I recommend you do. Cal is able to heal up Ray all the time, so as long as she's over 50% health, Ben can't die. And if Ben can't die, Ray can't die. So uh, it's a useful thing to have. Very useful thing to have. So I think we've used the boon twice on Ray so far. Maybe three times? I haven't been keeping track. I do apologize. But I'm just going to constantly be using the lifeblood, targeting over to uh, JTR over there just to try and keep her alive. I could potentially throw it on Fulcrum. That'll make her deal more damage and keep her alive a little bit longer. The good thing is once we've got that second stack of boons on um, on JTR, on, on Ray, sorry, whenever we use that first special from Fulcrum, she's going to be gaining a load of buffs, which means her second attack does so much damage. I'm not using it right now because I'm actually trying to slow down the battle here, I'm not hurting the IPD. I'm just trying to keep things slow so we can keep using that event special ability. Look, we're at 92%, should be at 95 now, oh, 93. Oh, this one's only going up by 1%. It's different to the previous wave. Oh, looks like it did more damage there. All right, so here we go. We've passed it over. Everybody has got the triple stacks now, so I can quite comfortably finish off this wave. Everybody's got the maximum boons possible, um, which maximizes our chances of winning. Now, I chose not to use Whirlwind there. Whirlwind will get me rounded to the next wave immediately. I wanted to keep it available for the boss in the next wave, but you don't have to do it. Honestly, just go in. If you've got your ultimate available, that does far better damage than the Whirlwind to the boss. So just kill this Stormtrooper and we'll go over into wave, wave two. So wave two, we're facing off against an ATST again, just like the Fallen Order game. I think you 
fight one in this map in the game. Um, and you'll notice it's incredibly, incredibly tanky, but it is able to be armor shredded. It is able to be stunned, all sorts of business. Watch Fulcrum just go to town now. Prap does just as much damage as Ray did with her Willwind. And then we're going to go into the ultimate with Ray to do maximum amounts of damage. So straight into the ultimate, we've got the maximum uh, buffs we possibly can. So every single time we're using special abilities, we're ramping our mastery, which means more and more damage. Booyah! As you can see, wave two for this mission is actually a bit of a doddle. Just got to be a little bit careful about uh, about the first wave and then you should be absolutely fine. Oh, hello, Smudgy Bear. We are greeted by the smallest of bears. And eventually it all should be golden. Look at all those buffs over on Fulcrum. So when she does her hits, bam. <laughs> That's why I really like Fulcrum for this mission. The final combat mission is still a little bit tricky and that probably is the coolest one on the planet in my opinion. And this time we get to use any sort of light side allies that we've got. You can also use Hondo. I don't know why you would want to, but you can. The team that I use is JMK with Cat and Padme. We're throwing in General Kenobi and C-3PO. I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that this is the best team, but I found good luck using this team regardless. So wave one is kind of cool. We've got these Haxian brood droids. They're bounty hunters that you see in the Fallen Order game. That captain there cannot be killed until you've killed his two allies. And they can only be killed when you've killed those four stacks, those cogs you see above their heads. You can only defeat them once they've got that all gone, all right? When you defeat one of those waves, it's kind of like Dark Trooper. They lose a stack, but they gain full health and protection at the end of it. Using JMK's heal immunity on them is a good way of getting rid of them quickly because they won't be able to heal and multiple hits will kill them very quickly. So again, I'm using the event special ability on JMK to start raising his mastery and we immediately get rid of one of the enemy's taunting units, one of their tanks, by using Cat's leap ability. Then it's just a case of focus down one of the brood droids until you can kill it very quickly. You'll see here we use the heal immunity event ability with JMK. So now when we take that unit to low health, Whenever it dies, its stacks will not be able to recover the health and we'll be able to kill them with multiple hits very quickly. Straight into the ultimate here as quickly as possible so we can ignore taunts. We actually do a lot of damage here with a big mass assist from uh, from Padders. Booyah, got rid of him. Now, these guys, these especially that droid captain, do phenomenal amounts of damage. That's why I'm putting the DI over on Kenobi. So here we go. We go for some kills on the Haxian Brood droid. Boom, boom, boom. You'll see we killed two stacks there. So next up, when we hit them one more time, because he's got an expose, that's also going to trigger and we'll do some decent damage there. That Drip Brood Captain cannot be killed until we've killed his allies. So watch out. See, the, the damage is huge. The only reason our Kenobi has survived is because of that bonus protection stopping the critical hits coming through. Um, another reason why JMK is very good. So I've brought the Druid, Droid Captain down to low and I've put the heal immunity on him so that when we actually kill his ally, we'll be able to get rid of him immediately afterwards. Wow, Kenobi nearly, nearly died there. Again, damage immunity on him, and then we're going to stack the event special ability on JMK. I think we've used that twice now. So, one stack done on that brood bounty droid. Hax Haxian brood bounty droid. That's quite a difficult name to say. Oh, there we go. We've got the heal immunity on him now. So when we defeat his stacks now, he'll be able to die very, very quickly. Just do a mass assist, and that should finish him off. But up. Done, and then we can kill the droid captain straight away. Last bounty hunter, not too much of an issue. Now, it might look pretty easy, but it's very, very easy to be overwhelmed by the incoming damage. That's why I recommend people take GLs for these missions, because you will be surprised at the damage output. Kenobi just casually one-shotting. Now, wave two is a little bit harder than previous missions. We've got the two droids, or the three droids, I guess, that we saw in the special mission with, uh, with the clones. Again, we can only kill these guys when they are stunned. So right now, our only real source of stunning is Padme. But don't forget, when we get that triple stack of boons on one character, then they will automatically stun enemies that are below 10% health if they pass the resistance potency check. So we're just going to try and stack up a little bit here. We need to use the event special ability. Cat will not be able to kill these guys because they are they cannot be defeated unless they are stunned. I think Kenobi has got three stacks at this point. Um, I haven't I haven't been tracking too well with my commentary. I apologize. Uh, so essentially, when Kenobi takes turns, if the enemy is below 10% health, they will get stunned. 
So just going to pass over turns back and forth to Kenobi. Kenobi's really good for this event special ability because there is a lot of mastery that gets passed around the team. He's going to be passing it whenever he targets allies. Let's have a look now. Do we have it over here? I'm taking my sweet time to go through this. Here we go, one, two, and three. So you can see when we get to, um, when we take a turn, if the enemy is below 10% health, they will get stunned. The tenacity potency check does come into play. So that's very useful for us to have an additional stun. Now, obviously Padme can stun with her second special as well. So let's not forget about that. And I do find C-3PO brings a lot of benefit here with his stacks of translation, increasing our survivability, and then his basics that are able to reset our cooldowns. Now we just need a turn with JMK here to make our lives a bit easier. There we go. One of the stuns, one of them um, resisted by the looks of things. So I was actually expecting a call to assist there, but obviously I don't have commander. Uh, I don't have snips in the team. So one more use of the event special ability will also pass that buff over to everybody, which will make our lives easier. I'm just spreading the damage over to the main unit there because uh, none of the units are stunned right now. So. We might as well chip away at the enemy's health. There we go. We got a stun. So let's finish off that Ailram Tomb Guardian. He's gone. Commander Ahsoka Tano. 99%. We need one more ability. And everybody's got all of the buffs now. So everybody has a chance to stun the enemy if they're below 10% health. And we're all gaining lots and lots of mastery stacking. It's all about nuance, guys. It's all about the special ways we deal with these enemies. Now, obviously, I'd recommend probably taking in some more units that could get stuns, you know, to make your life a little bit easier, but not entirely necessary. JMK Cat, pretty reliable, I think, for this combat mission. And finally, we have everybody's favorite game mode, Fleet. Now, we have to use the Negotiator for this particular combat mission, and we're going up against the Malevolence. The lineup that I'm using is using the Bad Batch's Marauder with the ETA-2 and the BTLB. Y wing on reinforcement bench we've got plo Koon, snips we've got um uh the clone sergeant because we want that extra tank and we've got the umbar and starfighter so we just open up with a boatload of damage interesting thing about this mission is with capital ships if they use a special ability they actually increase their cooldowns by one so a little to a certain extent you actually have to not use special abilities sometimes it's a little bit weird a little bit weird but you'll see how quickly we take out the uh, enemy's hyena bomber after this i actually lose my btlb y-wing here thanks to all of those buzz droids they just rip right through me um but it's okay we do survive we do a boatload of damage with our eta2 there and uh, i just get that offense up and crit chance up so as you can see our cooldowns have been increased because we used a special ability little bit of a painful thing to ha have done there but it's okay in the end nearly lose our anakin once the marauder does some good work and we call in this is why i take in the um the clone sergeant because i want to have an extra taunt coming in with plo would be fine but i feel like the taunt is more valuable here aoe's nearly defeating one of those vulture droids once we get rid of him we just need to defeat the guy on the left hand side to clear it out because the one in the middle is a summoned unit. So using the event special ability here, we're able to give us a massive boost in TM and damage output. I do recommend that. I get the crit hit immunity on the clone trooper, but it's not going to matter. I believe he dies now anyway, thanks to those uh, vulture droids, or those buzz droids, sorry, that are on him. Oh no, we just come in with the AOE with the ATA2 and finish it off for a good amount of points. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen of the tribe. That is your introduction to the Zepho missions. I will try to get some recorded footage of me using 501st clones the next time this event comes around, and I'm sure we can dial in the strategy for those of you that don't have Bad Batch. Marvellous. Make sure you give me a little bit of a like and a subscribe, please, guys. We're pushing for that 10k, and I could really use your help. It doesn't cost you a penny, and you get to see my beautiful bald head every single day. Beautiful. All right, until the next video, peace out, and may the Force be with you.